Good day, friends. This is Demola Oyele. Always a joy and pleasure welcoming you to Leaders Arise. Thank you for being a part of today's broadcast. And I want to believe that you're enjoying the year. This is the third month of the year 2021, and I want to wish you a happy new month. And of course, it's the first day of the month. It's my prayer that this month will be your best month ever. It shall be a month of the miraculous. You are going to see the hand of God upon your life more than you have ever seen before. And I want to talk to some of you out there who are visionaries. The miracles of God will light upon your visions. Whatever vision it is that God has given you to work with, you will enjoy the miraculous. Once again, welcome to the month of March, the third month of the year. And I wish you the best of God this new month. Today, let's get started on a life-changing discussion on visionary living. I began that about three weeks ago. And you may want to wonder, uh, when am I going to be true with this all-important topic? I'm not true yet, and maybe by the end of this week, we would be true discussing about vision. Why am I talking about vision? Is because vision needs to be rehydrated or repeated. A wise man once said that vision leaks, vision leaks. If I heard recently, all right, that in a season of like this that the world is, maybe I would just say the season of crisis, leaders need to over-communicate vision. That word is so powerful. You know, vision needs to be communicated, but in peculiar seasons like this, vision needs to be over-communicated. So in case I seem to be over-communicating this discourse on vision, you can, re you can re imagine why I am doing that, because we are in a very peculiar, very strategic season. So we have got to over-communicate vision. We have got to over-teach vision. Because vision leaks. Do you know why? When there are crises, people find it very easy to throw away their vision. When there are challenges, people seem to forget what it is that their life was all about in the first place. People seem to forget what God has spoken to them. They seem to forget what God has shown them. And remember in Acts 26, 19, Apostle Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. There were so many things that Apostle Paul went through. Persecution, trials, you know, a lot of things. Shipwreck, all right, uh, disappointment, you know, very, very dangerous uh, journeys that he went through. All of those things were there to actually strangulate his vision. But Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. And that's the power of vision. And that's why in today's episode of Leaders Arise, I still want us to talk about vision, all right? But don't forget, the emphasis is not vision itself, but a life of vision. And that's why we have titled it Visionary Living. Just as a way of recap, I have discussed quite a number of things about the life of vision. Of course, I discussed about the fact that vision brings order. When a man is a visionary, his life is orderly. Because of time, I won't expatiate more than that. Vision brings focus. When a man is running with a vision, he becomes focused. We have said vision dictates your choices. When a man has vision, he is choosy. He chooses or makes decision, decisions based on the vision. And of course, I did emphasize that vision is the key to passion. So in case you are there, you are no longer passionate as you used to be passionate before. You may want to revisit your vision or God's vision for your life because vision is the key to passion. That is what directs your passion. When you are running with a vision, you will sure be burning with a passion. Uh, Apostle Paul was just a man like that, that was a man of passion. Why? Because he was a man of vision. In Psalm 19, I think, verse 3, the Bible spoke about the sun. He said, The sun is like a bridegroom that rises out of his chamber 
and like a man that is about to run his race. That is what vision will do to a man. So when you see the son coming out in the in its full strength, the son has an understanding of his assignment. He wants to light the world. He wants to determine time and season. So he rises up as it were, all right, with a passion that cannot be stopped. And that's what happens to you when you are a man of vision. Nothing can stop you. Not even the problems or challenges of life. Not even oppositions. Remember in Nehemiah, Sambalat and Tobiah were distractors on the path of Nehemiah and his company. But because they had a vision, they were unstoppable. The hand of God was so strong upon them, they had the audacity to tell Sambalat and Tobiah that we will not come down because we are doing a great work. Nehemiah could abandon or take permission from his place of secular work to pursue the vision that God has given him. So vision is the key to passion. Then I also emphasize, which I stretch for about three episodes, that vision is the key to provision. I would like to encourage you to go back to the last three episodes. You will get a lot from that discourse. That vision is the key to provision. So that's the recap of what I've been teaching for the past two or three weeks now uh, in different episodes of this life-changing leaders arise. You may want to get back to my timeline or to this Facebook page or whatever platform that you are viewing from so that you can get on the same page with us. This week, I want to teach you how to capture God's vision for your life. I want to teach you how to catch God's vision for your life. I want to teach you how to conceptualize God's vision for your life. I have used three powerful C's that are very important. I talk about how to catch God's vision. Number two, how to capture God's vision. Number three, how to conceptualize God's vision. Number four, how to contextualize God's vision. He said, Pastor Demola, how many C's are you mentioning? That is part of what we do in teaching we want to help you to remember it easily. That's why I use what you can relate with. I use four C's. Number one, how to catch vision, how to capture vision, how to conceptualize vision, then of course, how to contextualize vision. Can I go over that again? How to catch vision, how to capture vision, how to conceptualize from the word concept vision. Then number four, how to contextualize from the word context. So let's get started this morning or today. I'm not going to uh, drag it for too long. We have about two, three episodes to discuss this. So you may want to be patient with me as I take you step by step into this journey of capturing or catching God's vision for your life. So let's get started today. Uh, I want to begin by saying that vision is caught, not taught. Vision is caught, not taught. Vision is experienced, not explained. I'm taking time to discuss vision in this teaching, not to, not, not, not just to, not just as a mental exercise, but to provide an avenue by which you can catch a vision. So vision is not taught, it is caught. Even if we teach vision, it is to provide platform where people can catch it. There was a story of Bill Hybel, very powerful man of God that taught a lot about vision and leadership. He said while he was in Bible school, one of their professors or doctors or teachers in those days just painted a picture of a healthy church. He was teaching them about the Acts chapter 2 church. I read it in one of his books, Courageous Leadership. And he said, while the teacher or the professor or whatever uh, painted the Act 2 church, how a church needs to be run in an ideal, scriptural, Bible-based setting, he said a fire was lighted in his heart. He caught a vision because the professor was teaching it. He was perhaps the only one that caught that vision, at least for that dimension of church operation. And that became what gave rise to what he's doing today. He was in class. Somebody was teaching vision, but he was catching vision. And it's my prayer today that as I take time to teach you about vision, it will not just be a mental exercise, it will be an actual experience. It will not be an explanation all right, it would be an experience. Thank God for explanation. But when you do catch a vision, you will move from explanation to exclamation. Have you had somebody exclaim before? 
and say, yes, I got it. All right. Or somebody say, we are well able. He has caught something. Or someone saying, I can never be poor. He has moved from explanation to exclamation. He has caught something. He has caught something. So vision is not taught, it is caught. So even when we teach vision, it is to help you to catch it. And how do you catch a vision? You catch a vision with the eyes of your heart. With the eyes of your heart. Your eyes are flooded. The, your hearts are flooded with light. All right? So that's how you catch a vision. With the eyes of your heart. With the eyes of your heart. All right? With the eyes of your heart. Somebody said that this your eyelids, they are like photographic um, um, material, whatever you call it. Anytime you blink, he said, make sure you are catching the vision. It's as if uh, the photographer, they, they press the shutter, whatever they call it, and it snaps. So anytime you blink, it's as if your eyes is snapping something. All right? So you look around, you snap, you snap, you snap. So don't just blink for nothing. Because, you know, our eyes are gateway to our hearts. Apart from other part of our body, your eye, what you see. Well, whatever enters your eyes, we enter your heart. And whatever enters your heart, we enter your life. So how do you catch a vision? You catch a vision with your heart. All right? And you must understand the windows to your heart, one of which is your eyes. So when something is, that's why when we teach like this, we want to paint pictures. When God also speaks to you, you want to paint pictures. That was why the prophet Habakkuk said in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, I will stand upon my watch and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. So God was saying something, but I am seeing something. Out of the explanation, I'm getting an experience. Out of the explanation, I'm, 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 I'm getting an exclamation. Out of what is taught, I'm catching something. So you catch a vision with your heart. So your heart is like the photographic film, all right, that, that registers images, all right, that registers images. So as you see with your eyes, and I want to ask somebody today, what are you seeing with your eyes? All right, there are some of you that vision, opportunity for catching a vision is just passing you by. You go to a meeting, you discuss with a friend, you go to some places, you watch some whatever, and you know something is tearing in your eyes, in your heart. All right, that's that, that's how to catch a vision. You catch a vision with your heart. All right, with your heart. And so I want to encourage you today: don't just live a life without vision. Just like the prophet Habakkuk, stand up on your watch and see what he will say unto you. Wait and see what he will say unto you. That's why Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, the God asked Jeremiah, he said, Son of man, what do you see? He said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And God said, you have seen well, for I will hasten my word to perform. I want to ask you today, what are you saying? What are you saying? That's why you must protect your heart. Proverbs chapter 4 tells us that, I think verse 23, he said, Guard your heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life. Whatever enters your heart will enter your life. So ensure that you open your heart to catch God's vision for your life. And I want to encourage some of you that are exposed to stuff that are not looking like where you want to go. You have the permission of God to change what you see. Because what you see determines what enters your heart. So you catch a vision by the opening of your eyes. So what you see becomes a gateway for you to catch a vision. And once that vision is caught, it gets registered or captured on your heart. At the next episode, I will push this further by discussing the other seeds. Remember, I spoke about catch a vision, capture a vision in your heart. I spoke about conceptualize it. Then, of course, I spoke about contextualize it. And that will become the basis of our discussion next episode, maybe the other, the next episode afterwards. Because we say I have a long way to go. I want to help somebody to understand this idea about vision. Then most importantly, to help you bring vision back into your life so that you can live a visionary life. Thank you for being a part of today's episode on Leaders Arise. I hope it has been a blessing to you. I look forward to sharing with you on this same platform 
at the next episode. In case you have questions, you have comments, you have feedback, or you want to say one or two things, feel free to reach out to us on all our handles being displayed on the screen. Till I meet with you again on the next episode, go right there and live a life of vision. You will succeed. Bye for now. Thank you.